Hello, I'm Mark Green. I'm one of the horticulturalists here at Harris Seeds. And with me today is uh, Jeff Werner. Hi, I'm Jeff Werner. I am a uh, Harris Seed employee by winter, and the rest of the time I operate a family farm here in the Rochester area. During the winter months, I assist growers on uh, a lot of different questions that they call in with, the uh, variety selection, seed germination, and uh, during the summer I operate my own uh, farm operation. What we're going to talk to you about in the video today is seed germination basics all the way from home garden up to beginning commercial growers. We're going to show you how easy it is and the few simple things that you need to be successful. Uh, one of the easiest and simplest ways to uh, start your seeds is using a tray and filling it with a seed starting mix. Uh, the difference between a seed starting mix is it's a much finer. Uh, it's usually made of ground peat and vermiculite. Your standard uh, potting soil mixes is much more coarse. There are sticks, bark, large pieces of perlite. The reason you want to use a seed starting mix is it makes it much easier for your fine seedlings to root in. It holds moisture well and it, it's going to have a much more uh, even, make nice flat beds and fill your trays with it. Right. Mark, one thing I'd like to mention on the seed starting mix and why it's important is when you're filling plug trays for growers that are utilizing plug trays is the smaller the cells sometimes it's harder to fill those cells with the commercial mix that has the bark and the uh, small sticks in it so the seed starting mix is the optimum mix to use for these plug trays so what you'd want to do is uh, fill a tray you want to make sure you get at least an inch of soil in there or more you don't want to get too deep don't want to get uh, have it too shallow so it dries out um, about an inch or so? Yeah, about an inch or so. Uh, anything more than that, uh, sometimes on your young seedlings you can, uh, you're just uh, wasting soil. Um, what we can see here, what we did on this side of the tray, is uh, we, we've made some small furrows for you to sow your seeds in there. Made them about a little bit more than an inch apart. Uh, that way you can just drop your seeds right along in that furrow and simply just take your finger and cover the seeds up lightly. You're, make, you're making the furrows about a quarter of an inch deep? About a quarter of an inch deep. If you're using uh, certain seeds, uh, like petunias that need light for germination, uh, you would just want to kind of embed them into your soil. It's always important to take a look at your seed pack. Uh, it's going to give you the proper soil temperature, light requirements for uh, germination, and most times we have also a planting depth on there. Mm -hmm. So always refer to your seed packet before sowing each variety. Right. So then again, uh, once you cover right up in here, and before you fill your tray, uh, we always suggest taking the soil and mixing water with it at first. It makes it so you can water your, your seedlings in much easier. Uh, it won't be shedding any water. Uh, you don't want to mix too much water in. When you take it, just take it, it. So you want to find it so it's just starting to clump a little bit together. Anything more than that, if you're squeezing it and it's too wet, you're going to find that you're going to, your seeds are going to be oversaturated and it's not going to give them a nice easy start. Right. In, a, in a tray this size here, uh, typically you can plant about three to five hundred seeds is what growers are planting in a tray in a 10 by 20 tray for seedlings. And they can stay in there for up to four to five weeks before they need to be transplanted to a larger container. Mm -hmm. What's nice is this is also a great uh, a way for organic and conventional growers to use. Uh, to, this way you're not using any plastics. There is a seed starting mix available that's also uh, certified organic or you can use just your conventional mixes. And the trays are reusable. Another method that a lot of people will use is uh, jiffy pellets. These handy pellets expand. As you can see this pellet has expanded from the small pellet all the way up to here. And they come in a lot of different sizes. It gives you a lot of different options to start your seeds. So you can start large seeds like a melon. Uh, you want to start tomatoes and peppers in a little bit larger cell as well. But if you're going to be doing uh, you know, something like begonias uh, or petunias, you're going to want to start these uh, in a little bit s smaller cell. Uh, one reason too is that it helps heat the soils up a little bit uh, more around these. A lot of uh, flowers do need a little bit warmer soil temperatures. And again, uh, what's nice about these is they are biodegradable. It's a natural product. You can uh, take these and transplant them right in the ground. Uh, they have the netting right on here. The roots grow through. Very, it's a very nice product, Mark, for home gardeners. Uh, Organic-based product, basically peat moss, and the roots grow, like Mark said, the roots will grow right through these, uh, the mesh on the outside. You can plant them right out into the garden. Uh, fantastic product also for kids.
Okay, Jeff's going to demonstrate the, using plug trays, which is a, another great way to start a lot of plants in a small area. So what I'm going to show you is for uh, commercial growers are using a lot of trays like this. This is a 512 plug tray. These are 128 plug trays. And the 512s are generally used for smaller seeds, petunias and snapdragons, some of the flowers. They're a smaller cell. You can fit a lot more plants for in a small square foot. The larger plug trays, this is a 128. This is what I'm using on my farm for my tomatoes, peppers, cabbage, broccoli, crops of that nature that I can direct sow right into the plug trays and then start them, germinate them, grow them on in the greenhouse and then go right to the field all in the same plug tray. A quick um, uh, method of how I do it in my greenhouse is I'm using the seed starter mix I fill the trays with seed starter mix and then I stack the trays on top of each other about five to six at a time and then I push them down just enough to make a little bit of a divot or a dimple in the top. I then take the seed and I'm just going to show you by hand but I do utilize, I have the, I use the electronic seeders and I have an air seeder also. But then basically you're placing one seed in each cell. I cover lightly with soil. I water again with warm water and then germinate them. They're ready to go. Pretty, pretty simple. Um, pretty simple basic steps all the way from a home gardener all the way to a commercial grower. Mark, you need moisture, heat are the basics mm -hmm. for starting your seeds. Yep, and the uh, light's also very important. Uh, the next segment that we're going to have here, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, getting the proper soil temperatures. Pro proper soil temperature is key for proper germination. It's going to make sure you have the best germination. Uh, also, it'll give you the strongest seedling vigor. Uh, so what we'll demonstrate here next is we'll bring out some of our products of our heat mats and we'll uh, show you how to um, achieve proper soil temperature. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, welcome back. Uh, now that we've uh, showed you some of the ways to get your uh, seedling flats uh, sown, the next two uh, most important things for proper germination and plant growth is heat and light. Uh, a lot of times uh, we'll get uh, calls, um, my, I don't have a proper germination, uh, my germination is slow, it's a little sporadic. Yeah, I, I tend to get calls like that in the winter mark here at Harris. People will call in, they've sowed tomato seed, pepper seed, eggplant seed, and uh, it's been 10, 12, 14 days, I don't see any movement on the seed. Uh, the first thing I ask them is check your soil uh, temperature. And of course we like to see it between 72 and 78 degrees for optimum mm -hmm. germination. And the first thing I ask them is, do you have a soil thermometer? Yep, yeah, checking your soil temperatures uh, when you first set it up and also uh, when you're growing on is uh, very important. Uh, check your seed packet. Each seed uh, has a little bit of a better temperature in which they germinate at. Uh, some cooler things like pansies might uh, want it in around uh, 65, 68 for germination. Your peppers are going to want it warmer. They're going to want 75, 77 right. degrees. Uh, so we suggest you know uh, separating your plants out. If you're going to have uh, two different separate trays, keep your cooler ones together and your hotter ones uh, to in another tray. Uh, again, very important to take uh, your soil temperatures. Uh, people will try to start them in their window sills sometimes, put them up on top of their refrigerator. They want to try to put them in a warm area. Uh, one key thing is that uh, soil temperatures tend to run about five degrees below whatever the air temperature is. So Mark, if I had my tray on my dining room table and my house is set at 70 degrees, you're saying the soil temperature is only going to be 65 degrees. Yeah, uh, just like when you sweat, uh, there's evaporation, cools things down right at the soil level. Uh, there's evaporation occurring and it's going to be causing the soil temperatures to be cooler than the air temperature. And of course a windowsill with the sunlight uh, being short during the winter months the window sill is going to be much colder at night. Probably mm -hmm. could be in high 50s or low 60s. Yep. So, right. so I see I see the need uh, for a heat mat. Yeah, heat mats uh, are nice because they provide constant, even heating. Uh, again, as you said, you put it next to the window sill. Your temperatures are going to fluctuate throughout the day and night. Uh, keeping it on a heat mat will uh, allow it to be nice, even heating during the germination process. Most seeds uh, like that a lot better. Uh, it'll get much more even uh, germination on those. Right. So heat mats are available from anywhere from a one tray. This is a two tray right here. Um, they're sold with and without thermometers. Uh, you can or 
thermostats, mm -hmm. and uh, you can even have you know less expensive home garden models all the way up to larger commercial thermostats to control your heat mats. Now, Mark, I know that we make uh, heat mats for commercial growers, and the sizes on those go up to uh, 20 trays? Yeah, you can hold 20 trays on our largest mat. Um, those are 44 inches by 10, 10 feet long. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes uh, people want to know, well, I have a greenhouse, uh, so what's the advantage of me having a heat mat? I, I know full well because at night the uh, greenhouse temperatures sometimes are harder to keep temperature up with the heat heat source that you're using. So if you have a heat mat on the bench, um, you can p possibly keep your air temperature down a little bit, but keep the heat mat on, still get good consistent germination, keep your overall utility bills down too. Yeah. Well, and as you said, utility bills. Another advantage is that uh, some of the early things like begonias. Uh, you might want to have to start those before a lot of your other plants and mm -hmm. that way you can start a few things inside and not have to open up your greenhouse right and yeah. you can you can save on uh, opening up your greenhouse for two three weeks that's a lot of savings right I know quite a few growers that have uh, a setup similar to what's behind us here a light stand mm -hmm. and they'll start 10 15 20 trays in the basement of their house earlier maybe two to three weeks before they open up their first greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mentioned light again, and that's uh, the, the next key component to having good, healthy seedlings. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you have a, enough light on them so they don't stretch. Okay. Uh, you mentioned again putting it next to a windowsill. Um, if you've tried growing them next to a windowsill before, you, you always see how they stretch towards the light. And why is it important to have a short, stocky plant versus a... Uh, a spindly one. Well, you know, we get the question, uh, how come the plants that I've raised don't look like the ones that came into the garden center? Well, it, it Mark, it's very important to have a stocky plant uh, going out into the garden or into the farm field because the stockier the plant, the better it's going to handle the transplant shock going from the seedling tray or the plug tray out into the open environment in the field. And um, uh, it can e be easily achieved through monitoring your light, your moisture, your heat, and um, why don't we move on and show them the, uh, some of the light stands that we have. Yeah, uh, supplemental laying is important for a home gardener just as it is for a commercial grower. Uh, we do have smaller stands uh, like this model. You know, it's designed for just going over one tray. Uh, and it's fully adjustable. You can keep your lights uh, right above the plants where you need them. Uh, so this one kind of slides right down. Mm -hmm. Um, about how high above the plants will you want to yeah, keep your lights? I, Mark, generally the, we recommend the growers to keep the light about three to four inches off the top of the tray. Mm -hmm. And then as the plants grow, move the plant or move the, move the lights up. The plants will be, you know, in the first week too, they'll be two inches tall. So you want to move the light up a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you have the light too close to the plants, you can cause some injury. Is that correct? That's correct. And if you have it too far away, they're going to stretch towards the light. Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned there can be too much of a good thing, uh, so we always suggest uh, trying to keep the uh, lights on uh, for early growth, about 10 to 12, sometimes up to 14 hours. Uh, a little bit later on, uh, once the plants are established and you want them to start to flower, uh, you can move that lighting and keep it more towards the uh, 14 hours. Now a question I have asked once in a while from home gardeners, they have light stands, smaller ones like the Sun Blaster here, is they have a setup in a windowsill. And should they have the light on along with the sunlight coming through? Uh, you know, again, you, you can, as long as you're getting enough light on there, uh, you just want to make sure, again, that uh, if you're getting too much light and too much heat coming down, um, make sure you want to ventilate this throughout the day. Mm -hmm. uh, you want good air movement through there just to make sure that uh, you, know, you don't have uh, warm, stagnant air in there causing any uh, disease issues with your plants. Um, also, uh, we've kind of going back a little bit, uh, we mentioned uh, too much of a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to always said monitor the soil temperatures because again if you go too high on your soil temperatures you can also have some issues. Right, so what, back to the soil thermometer. Mm -hmm. Keep that soil thermometer handy and as we said you just inject the soil thermometer into the soil to get a good proper reading and on a, on a plug tray you just take the soil thermometer and stick it through at an angle through two or three cells, piercing the side of uh, one or two of the cells, and that'll give you a good reading of what the uh, actual soil temperature is in those plugs. All right, so we've covered uh, sowing the seeds, uh, having proper heat and proper light. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the main keys. Uh, you know, what, keeping them watered, good airflow around the plants, 
Uh, usually once they're up uh, and starting to get their true leaves on them as well, you can start uh, babying a little bit of fertilizer. That's usually right. start in a quarter to a half half, uh, rate, half rate on those. Mm -hmm. So that will give your seedlings a good healthy start. Yeah, rule of thumb is I generally wait until the seedlings are about two weeks old before I give them their first feeding. I start at between a quarter and half rate and I do that for a couple of weeks and then I start feeding them a little bit more as the plant grows up. But uh, maybe that's some topics that we can cover in future YouTube videos. Yes, yep. So we thank you for uh, joining us here for our uh, presentation. Yeah, thank uh, you. Watch for some other uh, videos upcoming here. And uh, if you have any questions on your seed germinating, uh, feel free to contact us. That's right. right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.